tonight, but they got to get back on track tonight in Malibu. It's Gonzaga. It's Pepperdine. It's next. Ladies and gentlemen, during the 80s and a lot of the 90s, it was the rivalry inside the West Coast Conference. Number 13, Gonzaga on the road at Pepperdine. The Waves hoping to rekindle some of that past magic in this matchup. And who knows, maybe they can score the major upset like Loyola Merriman did on Thursday night on their home floor. It's great to see everyone again, Greg Heister and Craig Elo. And Craig, I think it's important for Gonzaga after that loss to Loyola Marymount, an abysmal loss that they get it out of their brains quickly and get after Pepperdine early in this game. Well, you can live by the adage, next play, and just yeah. throw that game out, although we got to talk about the last we game. Do. You know, there was some good stuff going on in the first half, transition baskets. Stephen Gray was knocking down shots from the outside. The defense was okay. They kept the lines at bay, but then the defense collapsed, and when it collapsed, they started hitting shots. They had energy plays from Kevin Young. Watch this. Out of nowhere, catches it, throws it over his shoulder. That kind of play was indicative of how Loyola played the rest of that game and winds up winning that game, beating the Zags. They were opportunistic. Gonzaga wasn't. And for Pepperdine, this is a team that won their first three games in league. Since then, they have not won a game. They're three and eight, but they've got Keon Bell. And if you're a Zag fan, you know what he did in January in Spokane. Yeah, we saw all kinds of shots from Keon Bell. 34 points in the second half. He had circus shots, dunk shots, aggressive going to the basket, and that's what kept Pepperdine in that game. But hey, Norm Barfew, sit back in your uh, Barker lounger and relax <laughs> and ride the wave back to the victory lane tonight because the Zags will prevail. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a must win for Gonzaga, but if they were to lose tonight against Pepperdine, it would put an enormous amount of pressure on things when they close out the regular season next Next week in Spokane. Number 13, Gonzaga, Pepperdine. The starting lineups, the tip off when we come back. In Malibu, beautiful day outside today along the Pacific Coast Highway and indoors. Here's Gonzaga's starting lineup Elias Harris, Robert Sacre, Gray and Bolden, and Goodson, the guards. Head coach Mark Few now in his 11th season and still over that 80% winning percentage number. Number one in college basketball history. And for Pepperdine, the starting lineup Michael Thompson, Taylor Darby, and Dennis Agre, the front line, the guards Keon Bell and Caleb Willis. And head coach Tom Asbury in his eighth season as the head coach of Pepperdine, his second stint, however. And he had a great record here at Pepperdine in the in the 1990s as a head coach. And that's why he's back with the Waves because he had such success recruiting, bringing in top players. So the Waves trying to get back to that magic that uh, Coach had once. Gonzaga's won 17 consecutive games now against Pepperdine, and the Waves win the opening tip. Willis running the point. Goodson there defensively. Hand off to Bell. Bell 37 points in the opener between these two teams. Thompson's three attempt is off. And here's Goodson on the far side now to the middle. Gray in transition to the elbow. Jump shot. Good. Much the same the start that he got off on <laughs> Thursday night. Good that he's looking for his shot because he did in the first half of that game against Loyola have a good First half shooting the basketball, he's going to have to have a better half against the Waves. There's Willis trying to create some space, and now Bell with Agre posting up. Bell into the corner. Willis for three. That's off the front of the rim. And Matt Bold in the rebound. And he sets up the half court. They go to Sacre. He's shoved from behind. Easy call there on Taylor Darby, our first foul of the game. Well, if you watch Zag basketball, you know good and well that that's the initial break. The big fella gets down in there in the paint. But here's the keys to the game. Gap time. Stop and score, score and stop. They want to create that gap like you just saw. Score. Now they want to get a stop, and they want to continue to do that 
and build that. And then the second one is transition baskets. Hey, in that second half, they didn't get any transition baskets or easy baskets, and that hurt them. So tonight, they want to get some easy baskets. Stephen Gray just hitting that three to give Gonzaga the 5-0 lead. Here's Willis. And a foul called on Elias Harris. Let's take a look at that three point shot a moment ago, giving Gonzaga this 5 0 lead. Holding off the inbound. Easy play here, Craig. Really, no one's out there guarding Steven. It's a perfect look for him. Good pass in from Matt Bolden. Nice read. Nice choice. Steven catches it in rhythm and knocks it down. Keon Bell yet to take a shot for Pepperdine as Willis now moves it to the near side. And he's got the defensive lock guy on him. 32, Stephen Gray, not only known for his offense, but has become the defensive stopper. Andre back to Thompson. Thompson will drive to the baseline, trying to create some space there. Willis, nice catch. Nine on the shot clock. Willis working on Goodson. Bulls his way into the middle. Throws up the wild one. No good. Tip back. Andre. And Pepperdine's on the board. Well, that's just perseverance. Staying with the ball that came off the rim. And Rob Sacre beats Andre at the other end. And looks, it's seven to two Gonzaga. Looks like the Zags are going to try to exploit those smaller size waves tonight with Robert coming in that initial break. And Stephen Gray now the takeaway and the run out. <laughs> and Gonzaga now leading it by seven at nine to two. Stephen anticipating well on the wing, getting that steal, and that steal led to an easy basket. Zachary, the block. It goes out of bounds. Gonzaga's defensive intensity break all already at a, a very high level. Yeah, there's a great overplay. Steve using his offhand to knock the ball out, but it worked for him. Took it down the length of the floor and then flushed it. And that's exactly what the Zags want to do. They want to get stops. And when they get those stops, and you want to create those uh, turnovers into points. 20 on the shot clock here for Pepperdine. Here's Bell driving. And a foul called on Dimitri Goodson. That's number one on Dimitri. Number one on Gonzaga. Or actually two on GU. Well, Meach had good position. Bell wide open off the inbound. Nine to five. Can't let him get going. Rob Sacre, turnover. Okay, Craig, let's take a look at tonight's uh, game brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino, the keys to the game. You're going to do them again, huh? Gap time. <laughs> stop and score, score and stop. I kind of explained that already. They want to have those stops and then transition baskets. When you shoot bad in the game before, you want to get easy baskets to help that percentage go up and give your confidence back. And that's what's happening right now. The Zags have a couple of fast breaks. Northern Quest Resort and Casino Hotel opening January 10. Check it out. A turnover there on Lauren Jackson of Pepperdine giving it back to Gonzaga. And here's Matt Bolden. Stephen Gray to Sacre. Spins on Agre, but he traveled. I don't know about that call. Looked like he got a dribble down in time. Well, Andre was standing flat-footed and standing straight up guarding Robert. Robert did the right thing, using a quick drop step to the baseline, but must have not got that dribble down in time. Deion Bell. He's got quickness. Darby jump shot, missed it. Agre again, another rebound, but then lost the handle. It's on the floor, grabbed by Harris, and he got it to Gray. Near side to Bolden. Matt Bolden, the three in transition. I was just about ready to say, Matt, don't shoot that, but he knows what he had. He had a good look at the basket. And Sacre, another block, his second of the game. And another run out for Gonzaga. And it's 14 to 5. 
A little different start for Gonzaga tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, they've always had good games following a loss, and tonight it looks like they got that start, so they have put that last game behind them. Look at this. This is just loose ball on the floor. Get down, kick it out, and Steven got his head up. And Matt Bowling going one on four. Usually not good numbers, but boy, he got it done on that play. And you know, we can look at the numbers on Thursday night, Craig. Look at the shooting percentages, look at the rebounding margins, and, and all of that really. It came down to the fact that Loyola Marymount just played harder. Yeah. They, there was more effort in that game put out by Loyola, Loyola Marymount than the number 13 or the number 9 team in the country, depending on what poll you look at. And don't you think the Zags got to realize that when they play someone, they're going to get their best effort, and they're going to try to outwork you. And you know as well as I do, Zag basketball, no one outworks a Zag. That's the way he coaches, and that's the way he teaches. But they did get beat in that respect against the Lions. Darby at the high post uses the dribble handoff to Thompson. He drives inside, and now Bell will try it. But Gonzaga's defense really shutting down a lot of the Pepperdine offenses and then or options on offense. But the foul call there on the flat. 14 to 5 our score Gonzaga 6 and 6 from the field we'll be right back any global credit union branch today well Greg I know the Zags are not superstitious players but they had a weird thing happen at shoot around today where they had to go out and play on the black top right yeah <laughs> and uh, it worked because they're six for six. Yeah, well, let's, let's tell the whole story. So their shoot around today, they went to a local high school here in Los Angeles. When they got there, there was the floor was being used by another group. And so they were forced to go out on a public playground, playground. court <laughs> and have their, their uh, shoot around with no nets on the rim. And there's a great tip back there by Thompson. Kelly Olenek into the game for Gonzaga, number 13. And now a foul away from the ball inside, and I believe. Who would they give that foul to? They gave it to Agre. Huh? Agre, yep. Yeah. There's a shot from the corner. Gonzaga red hot to start this game. Yeah, they were booted out of shoot around by AAU fifth grade teams playing in the gym. So they went outside to shoot and had no nets on the rim, like you said, but it's working. They didn't even put their shoes on. No, oh, flip flops. There's Bell. Foul before the shot. So Gonzaga has opened this game 7 of 7, coming off a game in which they shot 34%, but the second half was in the low 20s. That's what killed them, the second half. It was a total of two halves in that game against the Lions. And that's the last we're going to say on that, right? It wasn't the worst <laughs> shooting performance I've ever seen. That, you go back to that game in the NC2A tournament, Gonzaga, Wyoming, oh, yeah. with Stepp and Dickow on that team shot 26% for the whole game. Here's Thompson from the corner, short on the rim. Here's Goodson driving right to the rim and a chance for three. And again, Gonzaga now eight for eight. Well, Stevens got a couple of three balls for uh, the Zags, but we said the key to the game is transition tonight, transition baskets, and already the Zags doing a great job getting the ball out and beating the waves down the floor and scoring some easy baskets. And Gonzaga, eight of eight from the floor, four of four from the free throw line to start this game. Coming off the worst shooting performance of the season, they haven't missed. There's irony in that, ladies and gentlemen. Thompson, and that shot's long. Here's Bolden. He'll fire the three. <laughs> Matt Bolden, his second three ball. He's three of three to start the game. What a good night's sleep at the hotel and good coaching and practice on Friday. They've shored up pretty much everything they've done bad on that game Thursday night. Bell into the paint. Left that short. Pepperdine now 3 of 13 shooting to start the game. Here's Bolden. Left it for Goodson. 
Meach now again another lane into the middle. And he'll shoot free throws. Meach read that very well. I thought the screen wasn't a great screen by Robert, but it was enough to get Meach around the corner. And once he turned the corner, there was no one to stop him. So he took it as far as he could and got to got himself to the foul line. Where he could become a better foul shooter than what he's shooting this year. Will Foster will be checking in for Gonzaga here momentarily. They come in for Rob Sacre. Yeah, Beach is only shooting 55% from the free throw line, but again, it's not only confidence uh, at the free throw line, it's getting there. He hadn't gotten there a lot. Once you get there, you get a little more comfortable. And once he gets comfortable, you're going to see him start knocking down free throws like he did right there with the two. Thirteen forty-four to play first half. What a difference a couple of nights in California makes. Gonzaga leading it by eighteen in the opening minutes. It's Keon Bell. Into the corner. This is Orrin Jackson driving. Kick out to Dupre. Jump shot. Good. Jonathan Dupre, a junior out of Houston. That was a much needed basket by the Waves. Previous three, Gonzaga gave him one shot and done. Tough pass for Will Foster. Gonzaga's third turnover this first half. Keon Bell, here's Jackson. And now Lowry on Bolden. Bell again. Inside the free throw line, no good. Picked up by Moore. 13 point lead for Gonzaga. Moore just was in the right place at the right time to get that ball and put it back in. Jazz couldn't get the um, handle on Bell's miss. Oh, tough pass there. Goodson trying to dig it out, but Jackson keeps it alive for Pepperdine, and now Keon Bell with it. And the Waves with numbers. What's the call here? No basket. Charge. They call a charge on Keon Bell. So Olenek throws the tough pass, but makes up for it at the other end. Very great play by Kelly. Kelly, he's getting talking to right now about that high-low situation, but hey, don't dwell on it. Play the next play, and look what he does. Draws a foul on one of the best players on the Waves. Well, Trying to get to the basket. He's not one of the best. He's the best. The best, okay. By far, right? I think so. But I tell you, he threw a fastball to Will Foster. <laughs> and last time I knew, Will's no Thurman Munson in there. He's not going to catch it that with about three defenders on him. You're exactly right. Here's Goodson. Foster trying to set the screen. Here's Harris. Step back three. Gonzaga now 10 of 10 to start this game. They're five of five from behind the arc. Well, that's what um, you know. Good teams will do. They won't dwell on the past. They move forward. Obviously, they had a good practice on Friday. Had some good uh, skull sessions, I'm sure. Put that game behind them, and they're coming out on fire tonight. That shot way off by Lowry. Cut back, no good. Rebound, Foster. Goodson now near side. Sprint right to the rim. Left hand. No good. No foul. No call at all down there, and that's Gonzaga's first miss of the game. Dupree rattles off. And he's still a rop with the rebound, and there's Goodson on the far side now. Well, the Waves are going to shoot themselves in the foot because when you miss this many shots and you're shooting that bad and you're down 17 and taking those shots, you got to get better looks at the basket. Will Foster will go to the free throw line. This will give you an idea. Second half on Thursday night against Loyola Marymount. Gonzaga was 7 of 27. They made just seven shots. In the first nine minutes and 14 seconds of this half, they've made 10. Wow, what a difference. And welcome back to Firestone Fieldhouse where Gonzaga made their first 10 shots of this game to start it. They're now 10 of 11. Craig, they made just seven shots Thursday night in the second half against Loyola Marymount. What's the difference? 
Oh, Besides it's... the ball going in. <laughs> the ball's going in, definitely, yeah. but what's happening is they're getting some easy baskets. Steven starts out hitting some three balls. That opens up the lane because you got to come out and guard Matt and Steven out there. And what does that do? It opens up the inside game. <laughs> which we haven't seen, but they got a bunch of baskets in the paint right now. And I think it was their start on defense, too, where they brought that great energy. They got a couple of blocks out of Sacre, a couple of forced turnovers. They got some runouts. And offense is about rhythm, and they got into that early rhythm. And defense will create that rhythm for you. If you play in pressure defense, you're playing in the lanes, you're deflecting balls, that'll help on the offensive end. Three back to Thompson. Thompson over Bolden. Missed it. Harris the rebound. See, now that's four straight possessions that the Waves have missed shots. And you can credit the defense the Zags are playing on them for making them take tough shots. But hey, GJ's getting some early minutes again. Yeah, GJ Villarino into the game for Gonzaga. Goodson out. <laughs> Big Harris Will just, comes out. Yeah, give Will some credit. That's a long way to move that body. There's Bolden really feeling it from behind the arc. That one rattled out. Oh, Foster with the tip back. Will set the high screen. He's not a pick and pop guy, so he's got to roll to the basket. Matt takes the shot. Excellent choice by Matt because Will was right in position to rebound and tip it back in. Joshua Lowry, number two, freshman out of Phoenix with the basketball. And this is Jonathan Dupree. Back to Lowry. Foster pops out. Jackson with Villarino right there. Again, Foster popping out. It's a great showing. Really active is Will Foster. There's Dupree with five on the shot clock. Back to Corbin Moore. And he gets the roll. Well, Pepper and I need several possessions just like that one where they drain the clock down, hit the shot. Don't allow Gonzaga to to score two or three buckets in that time. Yeah, I agree with you. If they can make the shot clock go down and take some time off the, the game clock, you're exactly right. It will help them in uh, trying to knock this big lead down to the Zags out. Well, I tell you, that that was number one, a tremendous uh, entry pass, uh, but the way that Elias is able to put that back end on somebody and just create space and reach for the ball on that pass, I just love that. And, and a lot of times the, the defender will deflect it yeah. because the offensive guy will not go out and get the ball, but that's what Elias did. And when he did that, he also kind of separated himself from the defender and made a quick move and got himself to the rim. Harris missing the first free throw of the game for Gonzaga. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's lost to miss a couple of minutes ago. He missed 17 both point those, game. Yeah. The other night, the Zags were actually very, very good from the free throw line in the second half. It kept them in the game. And you know they're the worst shooting free throw team in the conference, which is just unbelievable when they're leading the conference. Caleb Willis backs it out for Pepperdine. Thompson trying to come his direction. And now Moore sets the screen. Here's Thompson. Free ball from the corner. That's a big shot. We don't expect Pepperdine to lay over easily. Stripped from behind. And the foul called on Bell, and that's number two, I believe, on Keon Bell. Yeah, he had the charge earlier, and now he's yeah. reaching from behind. That's just lazy defense in my book. When you slap the ball from behind, why not work and get in front of the guy instead of trying to slap the ball from behind? Because 99% of the time, you do that, what are you going to get called? A foul. That's called the last ditch. You should never breathe. The only way you trail a guy on defense is if you're chasing him out over a screen. But if you're trailing him when he's going to the basket, then you're playing pretty lazy defense. You might as well go for the rebound. <laughs> right? Just because right if to you the slap, rim. they're going to call yeah. it. Stephen Gray now with 11 points. Make it 12. And he has not missed a shot. He's 4 of 4, 2 for 2 from behind the arc. And now two of two from the line. And Steven the other night against LMU was four for 14. He's four for four tonight. Dupree. Here's Goodson. 
Harris with a double team right there. Sacre with a deep post wanting the ball and now he's got he got the ball but he was pushed out too far by Moore. Cole Pong not able to get him the ball early. Well if Robert gets pushed off that bar don't throw him the ball. Bull's got to learn. Gonzaga up by 16. We'll be right back. Well, I tell you, if Pepperdine's on your short list to play college basketball, it'd be hard to turn down just some of the views around here. Number 13, Gonzaga at, playing at Pepperdine right now in Malibu, California. The Zags with a 16 point lead. You're back inside the Firestone Fieldhouse on campus at Pepperdine. Greg Heister and Craig Elo. Here's Lowry. Moore at the high post. Now he moves. Sackley right there defensively. Dupree step back jumper. That one short. Lowry Fry flies in, but missed the putback. Zags doing a nice job on the boards, controlling it most of the time, but that time Pepperdine had an excellent chance to put one back in, but didn't get it to fall. Here's Bull Kong. Goes to the rim. Not a good shot by Bull. Dupree. Both teams now kind of settling in, settling down a little bit. Offensive foul called. Caleb Willis going to the rim, but he picks up the charge. That's his first. Coach Asbury probably loves the fact that you're attacking the rim, but you got to pull up if the big guy comes over, which is actually a really nice job of doing what they call build a wall. And that's what Robert was doing, building a wall to protect the, the basket. You got to pull up and try to shoot over. And Willis just was got going too fast and ran right over Robert. Willis to the bench with his first foul, but that's nine fouls now on Pepperdine. Just went below the seven minute mark of the second of the first half. Lob pass, Harris, jump shot. <laughs> Boy, if that's not a professional play, I don't know what is. Catch the ball, the see ball. what you got, <laughs> step back and shoot a fall away, and nothing but net. That's butter. I think we've seen, we used to watch Hakeem Olajuwon make a lot of shots like that down there. A little shake and bake, yeah. and, or a dream shake, or whatever you call and it. And then yeah. the, the step back, fall away. He was the best at that, wasn't he, Elo? He was. Lowry driving into the middle, and he'll shoot free throws. And they give that foul to Elias Harris. That's two on Harris. And five team fouls now on Gonzaga. The waves look like they're using an offense where you catch and try to penetrate and drive. You know, it's going to keep the Zags busy all night on defense. You're going to be can't stand still, can't stand and watch your man. You're going to have to move when they move because right now the Zags doing a nice job of doing that because they're not allowing uh, the waves to get any type of shots that aren't contested. That was the first free throw this first half by Pepperdine. And the uh, Zags aren't in bonus yet. That was a shooting foul, so. Mangis to a rock into the game for Gonzaga. Lowry one of two from the line. Goodson, Gray, Bolden, Sacre, and a rock. Sacre. Turns on Moore, and now he's trying to back his way down. Jump hook from the baseline. That's pretty. Nice job of dropping his shoulder into the defender and using that shoulder to create some space and throw in a hook. Too many times we see Robert back away from the defender instead of initiating. We want to see more of what you just saw. Gonzaga, 13 of 16 shooter. Here's Thompson. Warren Jackson with the left hand. Seven on the shot clock. Lowry a long way away. Driving. That's a charge. Mangisto a rock step right in front of him. That's ten fouls now on Pepperdine. Well, when you have that much dribble driving, guys 
trying to get to the rim, using the dribble. Zach's doing a nice job of, like I said, building a wall, taking those away. That's three charges now. Coach Krause is going to grade these guys out pretty high tonight with all those charges. Interesting. A lot of NBA scouts in this arena tonight, but it's not the scouts. They're GMs. It's the big guys. Pat the Riley, heavy hitters. Mitch Kupchak. Bolden's shot is long. Moore runs down the rebound. And this is Lauren Jackson with it for Pepperdine. Keon Bell, number three, back in with those two personal fouls. Thompson running the baseline, and he'll shoot free throws. This foul will be on Matt Bolden, number 15. That time, there was some good movement that the Waves have. There's no set offense that they're running. So you got to stay with the closest you can to your man. And Mike Thompson's a big body. Of course, his younger brother down at Washington State, Clay Thompson. Fine season for the Cougs. His father, of course, playing the NBA, and former number one pick. And his little, little brother's going to be a baseball player. Yep, he's going to go to UCLA. But got drafted, um, I believe, in the second round. Yeah, by Chicago White Sox. Yeah, that's big money, so you take the money and go. 36 19. Gonzaga sitting with their 17 point lead. Now 13 of 17 shooting. Their percentage is plummeting. They hit their first 10 shots. <laughs> Since then, they're 3 of 7. Well, Pepperdine's gone to a 2 3 zone now because their man to man wasn't working. Goodson has it slapped away by Jackson who runs him down. 10 on the shot clock. Here's Stephen Gray who glanced at the clock and he fires the three. That one rattled out. There's Thompson. Transition three. That one rattles out. A rap with the rebound. Waves, if they ever get one of these shots to fall, nice look, Meach. Rob Sacre, tip oh. back, Stephen Gray. That's basket interference there. Took one away from double zero. I tell you what, Rob Sacre playing as well in this first half as I've seen him in several games. Really Since looking November. to score. Yeah. <laughs> he was awesome in November and December. But quick, decisive moves. Good moves. You're exactly right. You can't goof around. And simple, right? Just keep it simple. It's the easiest thing to do. When you've got that body, Moore and Goodson go out of bounds, and Moore takes it with him. Plays Gonzaga basketball. Tried to call timeout as you're going, but you can't do that anymore. You've got to have possession of the ball before you're falling out. See, he's looking. Timeout, timeout. Nope. Can't do that anymore. Nope. Gonzaga leading at 36 to 19, and look who it is. Coming up at half, we'll talk to that guy. Former Zag great Adam Morrison now playing with the LA Lakers. He's here with his uh, girlfriend and daughter watching Gonzaga play. So we're, he's agreed to do the interview at half. I talked to him personally. Yes. He looked at me in the eyeballs and said, Yeah, I'll come talk to you. Why not? It's good to talk to Adam. It's always good to talk to him. But he said he didn't want to talk to you. You, you keep saying that's not true. <laughs> he said you killed him all the time. You the saw day. the interview I did him with, with him for the decade of excellence. It was a great one. Yeah, it was great. No, he likes you. Look, a cold toilet seat. <laughs> There's Mangisto a rop. Goodson down on the baseline. Can't get it to the rim. And it's Pepperdine basketball. You know, the possession before when the Waves went to the 2-3 zone, that's about three or four possessions that they've had it. The Zags tried to dribble. You don't beat a zone by dribbling unless you hit the gaps. You beat a zone by passing the ball and not letting the defense catch up to you. And that possession looked a lot better for the Zags. There's Thompson, corner three ball. That's off. Stephen Gray, the rebound. Gray with his head up. Bolden was trailing through it. The Mangisto a rop on the baseline. Missed the shot. Ball into the corner. A rock tried to save it. But it was Pepperdine's Keon Bell who touched the ball while standing on the end line. So Gonzaga basketball. 
the Zags have really done a good job keeping Keon Bell intact. Although he did explode for those 34 points in the second half in the last game. But, well, they're aware of where he's at all the time. Yeah, Bell right now with three, but that's what he had in that game in Spokane at halftime was three. Bolden, the little leader hanger in the lane. There's a, again, if you beat the zone, you beat it by hitting the gaps, flashing in the seams, that kind of a thing. And Matt doing a nice job and a big body. Yeah, Bolden into double figures for Gonzaga. You know, Zag's um, creating tough shots for the, for the Waves. Jackson's miss put back by Agre. He missed it. And it's Gonzaga basketball. I believe it was Will Foster in there who changed that initial shot. He's going to change a lot of shots with his size. Let me ask you this, Gray. I don't want to put you on the spot because this may be one of the most crazy things I ever ask you. Seven foot five with the way Will Foster has played over the last eight or ten games. Is he going to get an invite to someone's camp? You can't it, coach seven five. And he's catching the ball now and he's making plays around the rim. I don't think the seven or eight games are good enough to have him in by because he hadn't done it over a longer period of time. So it's going to be a little tougher for Will Foster to get invites. I'm but I'm not talking draft now. I'm just no, talking I, I about mean, hey, just invites, workouts. Work out yeah. Uh, some teams should be interested because of his size. Though. That shot off by Bolden. And here's Keon Bell. Goodson slows the ball down, and now Bell dribbles off his foot, and it's a foot race. Oh, Goodson <laughs> can't pick it up, and now he does. Left it for Will Foster. Jump hook, no good. Put back is. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He's hit the rim making plays. Okay, but I'm just saying the seven or eight games that he's played really well for the Zags, and we love the fact that he's done that. It just probably doesn't garner enough from a, a, a NBA scout to bring him in for a workout. They need like a season like that. Gonzaga's lead is at 21, the largest of the game. Thompson can't hit inside. And Darby missing, but he'll shoot free throws with a minute two to play first half. Now here's the Waves are kind of shooting themselves in the foot. They've taken 28 three pointers. Or 28 field goal attempts. Oh, field goal attempts, I'm sorry. And um, they've gone for a lot of home runs, though, three yeah. pointers. 11 of them are for three. Trying to get back into the ball game, and you can't do that against a team that's in the top 10. You gotta find a different way. Unless you're hitting them, and then it, it works great. <laughs> but they're not, and it's and that's why the lead's where it's at. Yeah, they've taken 11 points. shots from three. They've hit two of them. It's, the, it's the whole adage: you live and die by the three by the ball. Yeah, and, and what's happening too is when they take those long shots, Zach doing a really nice job rebounding. Seven defensive rebounds, and those long rebounds have created transition baskets for them. And, Again, that was one of the keys to the game was getting transition baskets to take that pressure off of them to shoot the ball that's like um, uh, they did in uh, the last game where they were bad. They don't want to have that pressure. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Goodson. He needs help. Picked up his dribble. Here's Olenek. A four on the shot clock. Deep three. Oh, that one's short. Rebounded by Thompson. Dead on by Olenek, but just a bit short. He could shoot that shot out there. He's got range. He's, he's got uh, great form, and he saw the shot clock, and it was a good decision by Kelly to shoot it. Pepperdine will play for one. Jackson with six on the clock. He may have started to move too late. Foster bumped him. Possession arrow goes with Gonzaga with 2.7 to play. How about Will Foster on the defensive end, though, not changing shots so much, but showing hard on all screens, making the dribbler either go wider where the defense can catch up with it, or like that time, putting some brakes on and the stops. But once again, an end of the end of the clock play, and we see a player wait till six seconds to go. I get, that's still one of the most. I would rather have. Would you, as a coach, rather have him hit the shot with three or four seconds to go than to wait until the end of the buzzer? Yeah, it, it's practice. You don't give your team a chance to offensive rebound. No, you're you're exactly right. If there's one you see at ten, you got to start making your move right then. And 
if you score with three seconds left, it still is a tough shot for them yeah. to get the ball in. And, and you put score. them at a real deficit yeah. to score with three seconds. Yeah, so you got to make your move a little bit quicker uh, than what the Waves did on that particular one. Stephen Gray, Matt Bolden have combined for 22 to 40 points put up by Gonzaga. They're 8 of 13 shooter. So the two stars coming out in fine fashion tonight Malibu for Gonzaga. There's Bolden. He didn't get it off. Now, on that particular play, I would have loved to see no one was guarding Stephen Gray. Throw it in the mat, throw it right back right. to Stephen. Because the guy, the most dangerous guy, is the guy that throws it in if no one's guarding it. Well, Gonzaga hit their first 10 shots to start this game. They're 15 to 26 for the half, 57%, and they lead Pepperdine by 21. We're at the half. We'll be right back with more live from Malibu. At Anthony. And welcome back to Firestone Fieldhouse on the campus of Pepperdine University in Malibu. Gonzaga leading at the half, 40 to 19. And we're joined right now by former Gonzaga great Adam Morrison as we take a look at some of the many NBA GMs that are around this arena tonight. Adam, thanks for taking time out. I know you've got your family here, so we appreciate you coming over. No problem. What do you think? They hit their first 10 shots a little different than what happened Thursday night. Yeah, I didn't uh, get a chance to watch Thursday, but I heard it was bad from everybody up there, and uh, they played well. Yeah, for a minute there, we thought Adam Morrison was back on the floor for Gonzaga. When the shots start going in like that, we're like, hey, that's kind of reminiscent of the old days. Yeah, uh, those are the, the good old times, I guess. Uh, we've always played well here, and, you know, I expect nothing less from these guys, and they're, they're playing good this year. How much do you miss the college game, Adam? Uh, a lot. Uh, you know, obviously, it's uh, more successful at the college level, so I miss it in that sense. But, uh, you know, I had, my, I had a good time with Gonzaga, and, uh, you know, I enjoy my life now, too. Yeah, and I know, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but are you in the final year of your, your deal with the Lakers? Yeah, I'm, uh, it's my final year, my rookie, rookie contract. Yeah, yeah, so what's, what's, what are the hopes for next year? Do you know, or you have to wait for the season? We'll How's see what happens. Uh, yeah. You know, hopefully I'll be in the NBA still, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. It's all a waiting game. Yeah. You still, you feel like you still got it, though, right? I mean, you can make an impact in that league still? I think so, yeah. yeah. It's just uh, a chance and opportunity to play. Yeah. Learning anything from Coach Jackson and that <laughs> triangle offense, or is it taken away from your game? I know it's a, an offense that kind of says pass and move. Uh, but yeah. You're a one-on-one -on -one guy. Yeah, it's a uh, you know it's a good offense. Obviously, he's won ten championships with it. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot. Just uh, it's a different different style, obviously, like you said. And uh, you know, just trying to adjust to it now. Now, some injuries. Are we going to see Adam Morrison on the floor a little bit more now? Are you going to talk Phil into uh, getting you out there? Or? It's, it's not my decision. Uh, oh, you're out of you know, uh, you know, hopefully I can get a, work my way into the rotation. But uh, you know, it's part of the business. Uh, just not a guy that uh, can play for that team right now, I guess. Yeah, that's a good team. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Morrison, if you're a Zag fan, I don't even have to introduce you to him. Thanks for being here, Adam. Thanks, guys. We'll take another break. We're at halftime, Gonzaga and Pepperdine. Stay with us. We're in Malibu. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Gonzaga with a 40 to 19 lead on Pepperdine. Greg Heister, Craig Elo, and Really, Craig, it's been the bold and gray show. Well, it should be because you, that's your two studs offensively. Stephen Gray got off to a great start, and when he gets off to a hot hand like that, hitting his first couple of shots, his defense picks up. And the defense led to some uh, easy baskets, and that's what makes a score get off. And Matt Bolden, same thing. Came out aggressively looking at the basket, trying to get shots for himself, and came up big. Making four of seven, only two of five from three. So. You know, Thursday night when they hit just seven field goals in the second half, they're seven of 27. When you shoot like that and you're a guard in the game of basketball, you've got to take that person. Your game is shooting. Yes, and, and your team counts on you to take shots, good shots. And make them. And make them. And when it doesn't happen, it just goes right down the line. So no one was able to make shots the other night. But tonight, when your two studs are knocking them down, well, it's going to make the rest of you play to their level also. Yeah, combined their 8 of 13 shooting. They've scored 22 of Gonzaga's 40 points. They alone have outscored Pepperdine. We'll be right back.
And welcome back. Gonzaga and Pepperdine about ready to get it going here in the second half. Well, as we take a look at the numbers brought to you by the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort and Hotel, Craig, if, uh, you know, the, the problem is, is that there's history. As we look at these numbers and we know what the score is, there's history with Gonzaga and Pepperdine earlier this year with what happened with Keon Bell and his 34 points in the second half. So with that alone, it's, it's got to give Pepperdine some hope. <laughs> You right? Think? I mean, it, it, you have to you have to be able to grasp something. I don't know that I can agree with you on that one because they have done a heck of a job on Keon Bell. Yeah, they have. He's only taken four shots. You saw the numbers, 16 points in the paint. The Zags are dominating. Now, the thing that we got to look at is it's a 40-minute game, right. just like you said. Now, that may be giving them some hope, too, that, you know, if they do get a, a performance like Keon Bell had in Spokane, then they might have some hope. But I think the Zags are playing much better defense uh, tonight. There's Darby. Here's Keon Bell driving, hanging over Sacre, missed the shot. Agre with a putt back, no good. But he got it back and kicked it out to Willis with a new shot clock. Here's Bell driving on Harris over Gray, missed that. Agre put back. So here's the problem when you got Robert and Elias going over to block Keon Bell's shot the little guy's got to come down and block out our grade, which isn't happening and I've seen the Zag run drills on that to make sure that they get down there and block them out they can't give the uh, the way second chance opportunities from our grade like that that's a foul on Robert Sacre who was posting up inside so Pepperdine with the basketball but uh, do you understand what I'm saying on defense? Robert and them are doing the right thing. They're making Keon Bell take tough shots. But if they're going to help out on Keon Bell, then Matt and Meech and Steven all have to get down there and help rebound and keep Agre off the board while those guys leave him. Leave him. Harris now trying to front Agre inside to deny that pass. There's Willis in the corner back to Bell. Thompson will work with it into the corner back to Thompson seven on the shot clock he drives kicks the bell deep three off the front of the rim Bolden quickly into Harris and he'll shoot free throws How about that hang in the air hold your shot draw the foul and still get it off the backboard it looked like it was going to go in but Elias Harris showing some good stuff down there see that hanging hugging the air just long enough to draw the foul I still think this team takes the next level when Elias is taking more than two shots it was two for two in that first half I think you got to get him the ball five or six times seven times and really get the offense going on the post. And I know Sacre did well in that first half as well and took some of those touches away. And that's what makes this Zach team so good. They're not a selfish team whatsoever. They're going to go to the hot hand. See, look where the defense has pushed him. Lewis into the paint, looking to drop it off, but nobody's there. And again, look where they're starting again. Right. And 10 on the shot clock, so Bell will try to break down Gray. Can't do it. Somehow he got by he and Sacre. And he'll shoot free throws now with a foul on Robert Sacre. So he picks up two quick ones here in the second half. Well, Bell had a nice little hesitation at the free throw line and drew Steven off balance. That's how he got by Steven. And then Elias and Robert had to come over and help. And Bell's creative. He's going to draw some fouls. And fans, be sure to tune in to Mark View. The Mark View Show, Sunday nights on KHQ in Spokane. Tuesday is 7 on FSN Northwest. Each week we bring you insights, interviews, and behind-the-scenes access to Mark View and his basketball program. Here's Sacre. Jump hook. I didn't think Meach had a very good angle to get Robert the ball. Somehow Robert ends up with it, but didn't particularly like the shot he took, but it went in. 
Boy, if he can make shots like that up around 55, 60 percent of the time, as Keon Bell turns it over, that takes Rob Sacre to a whole new level. With his size, seven foot. There's nobody out there in the orange jersey that can guard Robert right now if he catches the ball in the paint. But Robert has to play that way. He has to believe in himself when he catches it that he can make a move and score. Harris wanting the ball right there in the high post from Goodson didn't get it. Gray shoots the three. That one's long. Harris with a rebound and resets the clock. Pick and roll, Harris. Oh, what a finish! Assist, Matt Bolden. Just call it a dime. <laughs> you can call it a dime. Share the rock. Why not a quarter? Where did the whole phrase "the dime" come from? Dropping a dime, I know, but why didn't he drop a quarter? Well, Fraser, number ten. Oh, is that what it was? I have no idea. <laughs> Bolden. It good. Oh! Three! Offensive foul called on Stephen Gray. No bucket. Entertaining, though. Yeah, but give credit to Lauren Jackson for getting back there for Pepperdine. And taking that charge. Boy, I'm super. Get another look at it right here. Three on one break. Matt Bowden coming down the middle. Throws it up ahead. Makes the defense make a decision. Oh, that's the bad call. I'm not sure he was there. Yeah, that's not a good call. That's three fouls too on Stephen Gray. Here's Bell. Jonathan Dupree. Harris defending. Sacker and Goodson trying to trap Jackson. Here's Moore inside. Kick out to Bell. Free throw line. Back to Moore. Blocked by Sacre. He's been a monster in this game. There's Goodson driving. Jackson hard to the floor. And he gets back up. I'm going to go back to that possession before the, the uh, miscue by the Zags on the break. What a possession defensively. Fundamentally sound. Elias didn't leave his feet when the guy showed the shot. Guys flying everywhere when the ball gets thrown out. Closeouts. Everything. And that was just a great defensive possession for the Zags. There's the lob. Harris. Sacre hit the rim. Tried to go high-low and Rob threw it too far. Here's Bell. Tip back. And number 15, Michael Thompson. And a foul called by number 44, Corbin Moore. 15-39 to play, Gonzaga leading it by 22. Cricket. As we talked with Adam Morrison, it was kind of reminiscent of, of Adam Morrison as we take a look at the West Coast Conference standings, but now with six blocks, maybe Curry off or Austin Day's back as well. Who knows? <laughs> These are always fun games, and I know Pepperdine's been down the last few years. There's been some memorable games that uh, the Waves have played with the Zags. That the, the that Doug, was Christie. Doug Christie, the Pepperdine's former great player. Harris. Three way off. There's Keon Bell. Into the paint, kick out, Thompson, deep three. Well, their dad played on the post, but his boys can really shoot the three. Michael and Clay. Nice going for the jam, he'll shoot free throws. Robert did a nice job stepping in front of the defender on the baseline, that 2-3 zone. He didn't stay behind the defender. He stepped in front of the defender. And when you stepped in front of the defender, Matt had a great angle to see. Robert's a big body, so he threw it in there. You know, Robert's only got six points, but I've been impressed with the way he's played today. See, look at that. He's got the backside defender on his hip and locked and sealed. Whereas Keon Bell, that's 
That's totally a mismatch. Sacre hits both free throws. Funny, I was watching Pat Riley across the floor. Rob hit those free throws, and Riley watched them run the whole floor down. <laughs> They've got to be impressed with what he's done in this game. Even though he doesn't have a lot of points, but his buckets have been impressive. Here's Harris with a block. Number seven. Here's Dupree left open for three. That one's off. And now Goodson. <laughs> Matt was calling for the love. He Did was. you see that? <laughs> I like it, Matty. No. You got to take that ball to the baseline and bounce it into Robert. The defender was on the high side. Man, he could have taken one dribble. Rim, huh? Let Rob go get it. I, I think just one dribble to the baseline, he could have got the ball to him. Because Robert had worked uh, the defender up the lane a little bit. You would know. Oh, <laughs> to get it. Well, more than me is my yeah. point. No, I, no. I, I, I'm playing he, devil's advocate. I think he could have. Bolden driving, and he gets the roll to go. Bolden now with 12 points. I mean, it was good recognition on Manny's part to even see that Robert had the defender locked. He just could have made a better angle on the pass to get it to him. See, I never understood this three-man weave out top, especially against a good defensive team like the Zags are. They're just going to switch everything and take it away. Jackson, Oops. great lead for the three. Somebody missed Jonathan Dupree. I think they got caught watching the ball, and I think that's what that three-man weave out front makes you do is watch. Put you to sleep. Put you to sleep, and then A lot just... like our audience. <laughs> they were pretty excited before, but now they've kind of had the wind taken out of their cells. Which, by the way, we saw a lot of sailboats today, didn't we? We did. There's Holden. Three ball. Matt Bolden now three of six from behind the arc. Now with 15. Thompson again. That one's off. See, they're just throwing them up and praying that it goes in. The Zags are taking calculated shots. A rock trying to reverse it. Pepper nine basketball. Take another look at it right here. He didn't have much of a prayer getting that shot to the rim. He should have just kept his dribble. Huh? Could have just dribbled right out to the other side. You're exactly right. Thank you, Chris. But that's a lot to, to us. Uh, you know, it's a learning and a teaching thing that they'll use in the, in the field sessions. Look at Big Will. Yeah, another block for Gonzaga. Tell you what. If he doesn't get any workouts in the NBA, he will definitely get a job with Geico in the UK. Man. <laughs> There you go, but uh, yeah, he, yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh, I like that look. Zaga now with eight blocks. Jeez, Jackson, you got to get control of your team. Dupree battled that ball in. How about Warren Jackson just turning from 25 feet back to the basket and just throwing up a shot? Golden. Gonzaga basketball. 12.04 to play here in Malibu, and Gonzaga leading at 53 to 21. Four of eight shooting this half. Not quite the number that they shot in the second or in the first half, but still 50% is pretty good. Yeah, you get above that, and especially with the night that you had a couple of nights ago. It's a good sign that your your team does not dwell on what happened, but you move on. Great look, Golden. Put the cross for no good. Here's Bell spinning right into Bolden and somehow hit it. 
That's the sort of play that we saw out of him in Spokane up on the Jan January 30th. Yep, and remember about seven of those baskets missed by Steven attacking the rim, but about seven of those baskets were steals at the top of the key and layups, so that's why he had a lot of points. And the blocking foul called on that He's still around. 11.31 to play, Gonzaga leading it by 20. Keon Bell trying to get his Pepperdine waves going. It's a long way back for Pepperdine. Stay with us. You hear that? I think Jonathan Dupree, left hand, no good. Olympic fighting, Mandisa Rock. <laughs> Here's a rop at the other end. Well, you got to give them both credit for fighting for the basketball. Yeah, the two Canadians weren't going to give it up, were they? No. Here's Jackson. And a foul call here on Stephen Gray. And I believe that's number four on Gray. It is number four. So, Stephen now four of eight shooting, two for four behind the line. Again, had a great start today, but it's cooled off. Well, he's playing pretty good defense, he is playing and it's great taken defense. away from a little bit of his offense. He started the Zags off with some good shooting, but it's been his defense locking down Bell and keeping him in check. And when you work that hard on defense, sometimes your offense suffers for it. Flipped around, and Joshua Lowry runs it down for Pepperdine. Well, here's some good news. Robert right. Sackery just got his fifth block shot a couple of possessions ago. He's on the bench now, but five's a career high for him. That's Corbin Moore with two for Pepperdine. He has a team guns hanging out with eight block shots. The deflection right to Goodson, who is standing all alone on that baseline. We need the 10 minute mark in Malibu. Golden lob. Not a good pass to Foster. Well, it was behind Will. Will wanted it near the rim, and Matt just didn't get it to him. But did you see what Kelly Olenek did on that possession? People think in zones you don't have to scream. Yeah. He screamed the top guy getting Matt Bolden that look. I thought Matt was going to take the shot. More traveling there for Pepperdine. And we just talked about Robert's uh, individual accolades. He had four block shots against San Diego and Portland, so he just broke his, his career high. But right now, Pepperdine only 13 field goals. I know there's still nine minutes left. 17 field goals is a low by a Zag opponent, Augustana, and both Eastern Washington. And the way the Zags are playing defense right now, even in that nine minutes, it might be hard for the Waves to get to 17. Yeah, but look at how many offensive boards they've had, Chris. 17 offensive boards. Yeah, but that's... There's Bolden three. I think I explained that earlier when you got the big guys going over to help. Uh, Andre and, and Mo uh, Taylor Moore, both are getting those easy putbacks because there's no one going down to help when Robert or Elias go over to help and block, uh, try to block shots. There's a field goal by Keon Bell, but my point is 17 offensive boards, but yet only 14 field goals. So they're missing, they're missing and a they're lot getting of, a lot of extra, yeah. but they're not, they're not converting on the rebounds either. Well, look who's doing it. I mean, Agre's outmatched on this, yeah. on this floor. More is young and probably outmatched. So they're rushing their shots once they get those rebounds. And you're right, if they put those back in, boy, it's a whole nother ball game. Twenty point game. There's Caleb Willis, the freshman out of Stockbridge, Georgia, checking back in for Tom Asbury. Asbury was 16 and 4 as an assistant and 10 and 3 as a head coach during his first stint at Pepperdine. He really had this program at the top of the West Coast Conference. 
There's Harris. Grant Gibbs flashing through, got it back to Bolden. Five on the shot clock. Goodson deep three. That one back of the iron. Gibbs kept it alive for Gonzaga. Here's Bolden into the middle left for Goodson. You know, nice job by Grant. Grant was kind of out of discombobulated over there. You know, he just didn't have it going, and it kind of took the Zags out of the rhythm on that possession. But he got the offensive rebound and another opportunity for the Zags. Gets into the free throw line to Grant Gibbs. Bounce pass. Sacre. Take him up. Oh. Missed it. Put back. And he'll shoot free throw. <laughs> Rob Sacre playing a great game for Gonzaga. He's been exactly what they needed in the middle. Dominant. Gonzaga leads by 20. California number 13 Gonzaga on the road against Pepperdine and right now it's been all Gonzaga they lead it by 20 58 38 7 54 left to play Greg Heister and Craig Elo we are courtside for the call and it's Rob Sacre settling in at that free throw line and he hits the free throw so Rob has been absolutely feathery at the free throw line. I'm trying to look up his stats here. He's four for four. And then he misses one. I jinxed him. The old announcer jinx. <laughs> Every time you talk about a guy that's perfect at the line. Or anywhere for that matter. Except Derek Robbio. You know, couldn't jinx him. Tipped away by Harris. Here's Willis. Bounce pass. That was Tanner Carey who missed. And a foul called on Gonzaga. I believe it's Grant Gibbs. That was a pretty good play by Robert. He tried to help on the penetration, and there's a familiar face. Yeah, Mr. Pat Riley, the general manager of the Miami Heat. Longtime Laker, though. Laker coach, coached all those great teams. Gonzaga now 17 fouls, so Pepperdine into the bonus. And was a member of that team in 1966 of Kentucky that lost to Texas Western. Oh. He was on that team. That's right, he was. I remember watching the Sports Century on that. Yep. It's Goodson. Back to Bolden. Five on the shot clock. Whoa. It's Harris. Taken away by Bell. Possession arrow favoring Gonzaga. They call the tie up. But you see some of the athleticism in Keon Bell on a play like this, kid. Yeah, he's going up against a guy that's much bigger than him, but he had the advantage coming down because he saw the pass coming, so he timed it right. Robert. Zachary for three. He had to. Shot clock was way down. He has one make this year. He was one of one, so his percentage just split. He went from 100% to 50%. He well, went from a real threat to a pretty good shooter for him out there. I still like 50%, though. There's number six. Yeah. He's got a block party going block. on. He does by Rob Zachary. Keon Bell stepped back three. That's short. Darby with the rebound. <laughs> How did that go through? You know, if you put Elias and Darby back to back, they pretty much have the same body, kind of the same build. And those two were battling. Watch this, this block out. He got the inside on Elias, and Elias couldn't get in there. And then everybody went down to hell. Darby throws one in, and he's going to get a three point play, maybe. He does. Stephen Gray into the game for Gonzaga. That's Caleb Willis coming in for Pepperdine as Darby goes to the bench. Okay, 
as we near the six minute mark in Malibu. You know, the Zags have done a nice job in their zone offense. They've been patient, but they gotten the clock down too many times. There's a turnover. Yeah, Bolden just missed that pass. You got to be a little more aggressive. It's been in the under 10 seconds each time against the zone. Carry. Rebound Bolden. And see, that would have been a good shot for Steven in transition. He caught that in rhythm. That's Harris. an even better shot. That one falls through for Elias Harris. How many times have we seen that all year? Harris now 11 points. Now the guy's draped all over him, makes a move, goes right into the defender. I love that. If you're strong enough like Elias Harris, initiate the contact, and you'll get yourself through free throw line a lot. He missed the free throw. He could be a little better at the line, too. Bell. Foul on Sacre. That's three on Rob Sacre. <laughs> and the right smile. Hated Aunt Kizzy's the other night. Got some good soul food in. Yeah, some good chicken. Bell with the, the make. Wondering how to stay hydrated while extra exercising. We'll need to get a better night's sleep. Assurance Northwest Health and Gonzaga have teamed up to offer tips from the trainer. Now Zag fans can watch helpful video tips at GoZags.com. Greg Heister is a model on those videos. No. Of how you can stay hydrated. No. You're not. They, they really want some big fleshy guy on there. No, it's your smile when you're. They face. want somebody that's in shape, not. You're in shape. Not a big tub of goo. You're getting ready to go to the Iditarod. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not running it. <laughs> <laughs> a little goo keeps you warm up there. Well, <laughs> I'd freeze. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah. Defense! 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 Then on the shot clock, that was easy. For the two easy. You know, I'm a little disappointed in the waves. What I loved about the Lions the other night, the Loyola team, they played with a lot of heart, and they played like they wanted to win that game. I don't see that in the waves tonight. Bell took that rebound away from Bolden, now dribbles his way inside and finishes. Deion Bell shouldn't be able to do that on the interior of the defense. Well, as much as I hate to say it, I said it's a 40-minute game, and the Zach got a 20-point lead. You're going to let your guard down a little bit, but you still want your team to play hard, and you're exactly right. He shouldn't be able to dribble back and forth, either double-teaming, get the ball out of his hands, or somebody get up in him and don't let him go anywhere. And not that you want to ever route a team, Craig, and beat him badly, but... When you get it to 20, isn't the goal to get it to 30? And when you get it to 10, don't you want to get it to 20? When you get it to 20, don't you want to get it to 30? Yeah, you have to keep challenging yourself. You're exactly right. And if you just kind of play complacent, you're hurting yourself. You need to get that, whatever they call it, killer's mentality. Bodies banging inside. Goodson and Bell colliding there. You know, I just read a book by Coach Krzyzewski, and he talks about that when his teams play like the weaker teams. I'm sorry, but we're going to play to get it to 40 to 30, not to embarrass you, but to make us a better team. Yeah. And I think we should all take that mentality. Bell rolls that one in. Keon Bell now with 14 points. He averages 19 points and five rebounds for Pepperdine. Misses the second rebound, Stephen Gray. Harris, Sacre, and another finish. And another chance for three. 
44 has no chance against double zero. Zachary now with 11 points. I take the Zags from the start of the game. They wanted that inside presence by Robert, and they did it in the first half. They continue to do it in the second half. They're getting deep in the paint in that break, spacing the floor well, giving Robert a lot of room to work with once he catches it. I find it interesting that Zachary trying to convert the three-point play here and does. I'm watching the GMs in their different style. We've got Mitch Kupchak of the Lakers down, and he's taking notes, scoring the game, writing down everything. You watch Pat Riley and Mike Dunleavy over there, and they're just kind of watching the game and making mental notes. They can, uh, you're exactly right. They can pretty much see what they want to see. Just by looking. They don't care looking. about stats. Huh? Yep. Oh, wow, did Bell get up there and try to flush it. And he was on top of the wave there. Three fifty to play. Here's the lob too high for Harris. But Gray saved it to Harris. Bounce pass Sacre and he missed it. See, instead of Robert's got an excellent chance right there to catch the ball and try to flush it. I think that's the move he should have made. He's using that half hook a little bit too much. Offensive foul. You know what I mean? Try it. There's Mitch Gupchick. We'll talk about it when we come back, Greg. 3.33 to play. Gonzaga leads it by 20. And with 3.33 to left, Greg Heister and Craig Elo. And I guess uh, Gonzaga, they kind of got out of this game what they needed to get out of this game. They got off to that great start, hit the first 10 shots, but really kind of got themselves going on defense again. Well, the other night when it went bad, they started throwing up shots, and it made the percentage a lot worse. Tonight, they've cut almost... I mean, they did 61 shots the other night, 46 tonight, hitting 24 of those. So it's been a big, big difference in the way they've approached the game. Instead of just throwing up shots, they've gone inside, and they've gotten transition baskets, and they've kept that number three, Keon Bell, in check in the second half. Where that was the only way they were in the game back in Spokane was his second half performance. And we should point out that, boy, what an effort by you. Just an all pro, <laughs> all Madden, put them on the horse trailer kind of effort out of you today. I'm not sick. It's just laryngitis or. Well, laryngitis is a sickness. Oh, it is? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, Isn't I it? got it then. I don't know. It's just throat just went south on me. I mean, anything that's an itis, isn't that a sickness? <laughs> There's Olenek inside with a little turnaround. But. Yeah, so you're fighting the, the voice thing. Just voice. Talk too much. <laughs> Pepperdine still playing hard. Joshua Lowry's in the corner. Well, you're building for the conference tournament now. You got to have some type of momentum, even when you lose like they're losing now. You got to want to build something, giving yourself a hope and a chance in that tournament. Cole Kong looking for help, got it to Grant Gibbs. Back to Stephen Gray, free ball, long. Jonathan Dupree with the rebound. And this is Lowry for Pepperdine. Keon Bell driving. Count the bucket. Chance for three. Oh, he's getting his stats up there tonight. Only three points in the first half. Yeah, he's a second half player. Three <laughs> points up in Spokane and 34 in the second half. Tonight, three and 13. Three and 14. It seems like every team now has, or every team in the West Coast yeah. now has one of those players that can, that can drop 30 on you. Loyola Merriman, I think, has a couple of them. A couple of them, right? And a Hamilton that can give you like a double double. Yeah, and Bernie Field. Gibbs spinning and hitting. Under two minutes to go. 
Gonzaga about to earn their 10th win in West Coast Conference play to get to 10 and 2. They remain in first place. One game ahead of St. Mary's as Lowry goes to the rim. And because they own the tiebreaker with St. Mary's and Portland, they're still in the driver's seat, Greg. Because if they end up tied with St. Mary's in Portland, then they still earn that number one seed in the West Coast. But you don't want to deal with it. No. You want to win it outright. No questions, no doubts, no anything. And so they win today. They're still going to need to win those last two games. They don't. If they drop one in St. Mary's, Portland went out. They're going to win by the tiebreaker. But who wants that to happen? Well, they won't approach it that way. Yeah. They'll approach it like you said. Win the two games, get the number one seed, go to Vegas. They got Santa Clara next week and San Francisco. The Don's one of those teams that's already handed Gonzaga their first loss in West Coast Conference play. Pretty pass, Olenek. Well, well, the, the NBA guys have already left the house. They missed that one. <laughs> well, just a great dive on a on a zone offense. But the guy on the blow post catches it. The high post needs to dive to the basket. Thompson missed the shot. Got <laughs> Foster with the block, but a foul call. He blocked that with two hands. He did. He just smothered it. He's having fun. It's hard to tell when Will's having fun. But we have to assume he's having fun. He's yeah. not a guy that smiles on the outside. No, but, but man, you, you got to assume he's smiling on the inside. I think so, and I think with where the score is and feeling even good about the way he played tonight, there's a smile in there. <laughs> I mean, there's always the Geico commercials waiting for him after basketball, right? Exactly. I'm going to be his agent. Man. I think you should. I think you're the first one to say it publicly. Oh, my gosh. I know a lot of people have said it. I've heard that. Oh. But I think you're the first guy I've heard say it publicly. So a lot like Pat Riley trying to trademark three Pete. Maybe you ought to <laughs> trademark yeah, Will as the new as Geico. The new Geico guy. Under a minute to go. A little long. Grant Gibbs way off on that shot. There's Keon Bell looking for more. You know, we were talking with uh, Coach Rice before the game. There's two more blocks by Will Foster. Bell got it back. Foster went for a third one. Thompson missed the tip jump dunk. And Dupree knocks it out of bounds. And Coach Rice came over. We were talking about all the good teams that were come through Gonzaga. And we came up with the all hair team. <laughs> Adam Morrison, Dan Dickout, Roni Turioff, Blake, Matt Bolden. Matt Bolden, you're not going to put Blake on the all hair team? No. That bowl cut? And Will. And Big Will. I think you had Stephen Gray on there. Oh, we, you could add Stephen with that new um, dreadlock look this year. Gonzaga's not going to take another shot. Well, Gonzaga one and one on this road trip. They split it in Los Angeles. They remain in first place in the West Coast Conference with two games remaining in the regular season. They did a really nice job tonight. They did. They rebounded well they as they have all season after a loss. I pity the team, like I said, that has to play them after a loss. 72 54 our final. We'll take one more timeout when we come back. We'll have our player of the game. Stay with us. Gonzaga now 10 and 2 in the West Coast Conference. And welcome back. Matt Bolden, tonight's group held find more minutes, impact player of the game, finishing with 18 points on 7 of 11, shooting with three rebounds. When a Bulldog needs help, he's got teammates. When a group health member needs help, they've got a great team as well. Day or night, learn more about group health's concert, consulting nurse helpline at ghc.org. And joining us right now, the sharpshooter himself, Mr. Matt Bolden. All right, Matt. Well, what is it about losing a game and then you guys just get it going again the very next game? I don't know. What uh, are we learning from this? Obviously, we don't want to be losing these games. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we just we just come out and try to respond the best we can. Yeah. Um, I mean, we obviously didn't play that well Thursday. We didn't come out with the same game uh, we've been coming out with. Uh, so, yeah, basically, we just want to respond. And so 
we just got back to our defense, really focused on, you know, pushing the ball more, getting it inside, and uh, getting them in foul trouble. It was good, good effort. Yeah, and I know as a guard, Matt, and you pride yourself on being able to shoot the ball, when you have that sort of effort against LMU, and it wasn't just you, it was the whole team, nobody shot the ball well. That's got to be frustrating for you. Oh, yeah. Horrible. Oh, it's it's rough. Um, yeah. Especially because, I mean, there are, there's going to be games like that, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be days where you just aren't feeling it and your shot's just not falling. But those are the games we have to, you know, rely on other things. We have to really, you know, take it to the rack a lot more. You know, we got to defend a lot better. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, the games we have to come up with better stuff. We just didn't have it the other night. So, it, it, I mean, it felt good for my day to fall a little bit tonight. You played awesome tonight. And I know the last couple of games, several games now, there's NBA scouts all over this place. How aware of that are you? And, and how does that impact you as you... You play this game and you I mean we're yeah. we're a month away now from you going into the next stage of your yeah. life. Yeah. Oh, I mean it's getting close, but I uh, I mean I think at halftime one of the one of my other buddies said, I think that's Pat Riley. <laughs> I mean that was about the most I saw of it. You know, I uh, yeah. I just try to focus on the game. I mean whatever happens happens. I'm just trying to come out here and play my best. Tell us about shoot around today. Shoot around? Was it fun? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Easily the most bizarre. Yeah, bizarre is a yeah. great word for it. I mean we were on a black top. You know, we shot. We were at a blacktop at Westchester High School. Uh, it was ridiculous. I mean, I think half of the guys were in sandals, some were in tennis shoes. Nobody really wore basketball shoes. We shot half quarters out there. I mean, it was fun. It was fun. They, I mean, they took care of us for as, yeah. as much as you can outside. See, we were worried about that. We didn't know if you would get the half court shots in. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's ritual. We got to get it done. Oh yeah. yeah, that's just how it goes. I mean. Yeah, we had to be careful though that it didn't bounce and go over the fence because they were outdoor balls. <laughs> it was still fun. That's good. We're going to throw a graf graphic up here right now, Matt. And this is senior years of the great guards here. And look, I mean, you're right in there with Step. And I mean, Dickow's year was ridiculous with the 21 points, Santangelo's numbers. But uh, we've got a, a good month and a lot of big games left. But assess your, your senior year, your, your years here at Gonzaga. Have you accomplished what you need to? Oh, uh, yeah. To? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like every year, I, my, my main goal coming in was every year get better. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to get better every year, whether it's defense, you know, dribbling, shooting, whatever it was. I was just trying to get better every year at. Uh, you know, and I think I've done that so far. Um, I mean, this has been a great senior year. Uh, I mean, when we uh, we didn't have a lot of expectations going into this. I mean, we did, but from you know from the media, from the outside, a lot of people thought we lost a lot. And I thought we came in so far and uh, and done very well. Hopefully, uh, we just you know keep playing well and make a good run. Yeah. Well, you, and and how about Rob Sacre? Oh. Go. Oh, Rob and, and was the stud tonight, man. How many blocks did he have? How many blocks? I think he had six, six blocks. Six blocks, and I mean, they called a few fouls that may not have been uh, may not have been blocked. I mean, yeah. Fouls, I mean, but he was a beast tonight, and so was Will. I mean, we uh, coach has been telling us to really protect the rim a lot better, uh, and they've been doing a great job. Rob was a, a man tonight. Yeah, he was a career high six blocks as a team. I think he had nine blocks, but the shooting turned right around. You guys hit your first ten shots of the game. You finished great. over fifty percent again. Uh, it's amazing what it. What a couple of days, the difference that it makes. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, like I said, we just had to come out and uh, respond. I mean, we've been doing a good job of that all year. Yeah. We, uh, we, we aren't playing very well. We try to come out and respond. I thought, I mean, right from the get-go, we, we got it done. Well, when you have a game like you did the other night, you're the old man on the team. <laughs> to an did you have to give a lot of advice out to tell these guys to keep their heads up? Or <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, not not more than any other game. I mean, we we lost uh, San Francisco, and the guys didn't want to respond. We obviously don't want to come out against any other team this year the same way we did against LMU. But uh, yeah, they knew. I mean, the, yeah. the coaches do a good job implementing how big each game is too. And uh, but I mean, you're the old man yeah, on the team. The old man. Yeah, but I mean, well, that they, doesn't sound good, does it? No, it sounds awful. I don't like <laughs> it. You know, when he says I'm the old man, that's not where I want to be. Uh, Matt, um, thanks. Get to the locker you. room. All right, good seeing you. Good seeing you, yeah. see you guys. Well, uh, Craig. Ten you're the old now. man on our team. Who is? You are the old man. I'm on the our old team. man on our. Oh boy, some days <laughs> I feel like the old man. 10 and 2 here as we look it's at impressive. what's coming up Santa Clara San Francisco next week to finish out regular season play with Cal State Bakersfield in that tournament. Is this, team, is this team ready for March? Oh, I think with the way they responded tonight after a game like they lost on Thursday, that's a good sign that they can bounce back that quickly over just one night of practice Friday and um, get things shored up and come out and play like they did against the Waves is impressive. That's Craig Elo. I'm Greg Heister. For the rest of our crew, good night from Malibu. Gonzaga hits their first 10 shots, and they roll to a 72-54 win. We'll see you next week. Good night, everyone.